Alrighty, so in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to start writing blog posts on medium.com. And we're going to start from the basics. So I'm going to show you how to sign up for free and how to get started on the platform. And then I'm also going to show you how to write blog posts, how to format those blog posts using the Medium editor and how to publish content on publications to maximize your reach. And by the way, make sure to sign up to my free Medium Masterclass by clicking the link below because there I will teach you my exact growth strategy that you can use that got me from zero to 12,000 followers on Medium. So here's a brief little backstory. And if you don't care about this stuff, just skip onto the next section where I will teach you how to sign up to the platform and start using it. But nonetheless, I started blogging from medium.com three years ago or a bit over three years ago. And I just wanted to give it a try because I had heard a lot of good news about the platform. I had seen it rank high on Google for many search queries that I had typed in related to software development because I was a coder back then. And I really fell in love with the platform and I just can't forget the moment when I first earned my first cent. So I think I had published one story and the next day I received an email which said that I had non-zero earnings so I will need to like fill in some tax information or stuff like that. And I was like, wait a minute, I have earned on the platform, I just joined yesterday. And then I checked that the first story that I had published was actually making money. It had made like 20 cents or something like that. So it's not much, but it felt so amazing. So I got instantly hooked up. So I was instantly like, okay, I published one story in just a couple of hours. What if I publish a couple of hundred stories? Perhaps I can make it to like $100. But of course, it's not about money. It's all about providing value and being entertaining, interacting with people and stuff like that. But that was super motivating because those were the first like sense that I had earned online. So that was crazy good. And that's why I really love the platform. So it is very easy to get started. You just sign up. You don't even need to join the Medium member program if you don't want to, but if you want to earn from your stories, then you of course need to join there. But nonetheless, it's a great goal to set as the first goal that you can actually write content and earn from it so that you can already pay the membership fee right at your first month. And that was actually what happened to me. So. I think that I made like $20, $30 during my first month on Medium already. So that was already enough to cover the costs of that Medium membership program. I absolutely love this platform. This is one of the easiest ways to start an online business and to start seeing results right off the bat. Because there are some occasions where somebody has had their first ever blog post go viral. Of course, it is an exception. I think it took like 70 blog posts for me to go viral. But this is something you definitely don't want to miss. So I'm really, really excited to have you here today. But now let's get started with medium.com. Alrighty, so let me show you how to use Medium. And I'm going to actually start by showing you how to sign up and how to start using this platform as a social media platform from the user's perspective. And then we're going to design our profile and then we're actually going to start writing content on the platform. So first, you need to head over to medium.com and then you just click on get started sign up with google and then you can sign up here and once you complete this step then it's time to give your full name so you're going to use your full name here just to make it as relatable as possible and then just hit create account and then it's time to choose the topics that you're interested in and this can be something that you are interested in when it comes to reading content on the platform so you can think of it as this kind of social media platform where you're joining and now Medium is just asking you what kind of stuff you want to see on your Medium feed. So if you're reading stuff here, then these are the topics that Medium will be base your recommendations on. So you don't have to like target topics that you're about to write on the platform. You can just like choose topics that are in of interest to you. Click on continue and here it asks you to pay and in fact, you don't have to do this. So you can just scroll down here below and click on this or continue with a free account. So I would highly actually recommend you using this option, this member option. But if you're not interested in that right at the moment, just click on continue here without paying. And now this lands you to the main view of your <clears throat> Medium account. So this is like the social feed or whatever you want to call it. So this is where you see all these stories, recommended topics, staff picks, and who to follow. 
This is like the social media feed of your Medium account and there's nothing too specific going on here. So let's just start exploring right off the bat. So right here on the left corner, you have this search box and you can just click on this explore topics. Once it loads, you can choose something. For instance, here are the topics that are of interest to you based on Medium's algorithm, based on what you just chose on the sign up. So for instance, I can just click on software development and this will now show me the software development space. So this is all the stories that have been tagged with software development. And as you can see, there are 2.2 million followers and there are like almost 300,000 stories. And then once you scroll down, you can start reading these most recent stories. And one thing to notice is that some of these stories has this yellow star and some of them don't. And this yellow star means, that, for example, that this story right here is a member only story and this means that you cannot read the entire story if you're not a member except for that there is a trial with which you can basically read five of these members only stories per month without having to be an active member but okay that is one way to find stories now let's keep on exploring so is in fact medium is a platform where you have authors and you have readers and then you have publications and then you have topics so there are all all kinds of things on this platform and now if you search for something like software it lists a bunch of people so if you click and open one of these this is like a medium user this is similar to what you just created so this person is clearly not using their own name but this is a user that is publishing stories related to software development and if you now wanted to you could click on follow and you could start following that person and now Whenever this person publishes, it is a chance that you will see their, their story right here at the dashboard of your Medium account. And then if you also paid attention, if we search for software development, we can also see these publications. And these are some spaces that exist on Medium where people share a common interest. So this is not a single person, for example, better programming or JavaScript in plain English or code like a girl. These are not a single person, but instead these are spaces where people share programming or software development related content. And for example, if we open up JavaScript in plain English, we're going to see that it is a publication. And actually, we can also follow this space. So if you're interested in learning or reading the stories that people publish on this programming publication, which is basically being updated and being maintained by these professional coders, you can just hit follow and then you will start seeing these stories on your dashboard. Then you can also start writing content for publications like this. So for instance, here you can click on write for us and here you can apply to become one of the authors of these programming related publications. So you can get more eye pairs to your stories even without followers because you can become this contributor on this kind of a on this kind of a publication. So that's really cool and I'm going to talk to you about a bit more about it later in this video, but for now it's just enough to know that there are people, there are publications, and then there are topics where you can find these insightful stories. And now when it comes to engaging with content on Medium, it is like a traditional social media in this sense as well because you can just open up one of these stories, you can read it through, and if you really like the story, you can actually click on this clap button right here. And this clap button gives a like to the author of the story. But here's the thing, it is not just one clap, but you can actually click this up to 50 times and give 50 claps to this person. So if you really, really like this story, you can actually give it all 50. But if you click more, then it will not count anymore because 50 is the maximum. And now this, for example, says that this person has 26,000 claps. But that is not the number of people ha that have liked this story. You can click on here, view claps, and then you're going to see the actual number of people who have clapped. So this is 6,000. So it's impressive, but it's not like 26,000. And then you can also leave a comment. So you can just click on here and then scroll over here and do something like nice post made and then just respond it. And there you go. So this is basically how you interact with authors. And also something that is worthwhile noticing is that if you're using this platform on your free time, for example, if you're jogging or going to the gym or just 
wanting to read something before going to the bed, you can also listen to this blog post. So some of these blog posts have this listen option right here. So you can just click on it and it will start reading the blog post out loud. But you have, of course, you need to be a member to use this feature. But nonetheless, that's really cool, I think. So now that you know how to use the platform as a reader or how to find insightful stories and people to follow and publications to follow, then it's time to start taking steps towards becoming a writer on this platform. So first and foremost, what you want to do is customize your profile. So here at the top right corner, you just click on here, click on profile, and then click on edit profile. And then one thing you definitely want to do is to add an image of yourself here. So you can just click on remove and you can click on update to add an image. For example, here I have added a selfie of myself and this doesn't need to be anything too complicated so you don't need any kind of studio quality image as a matter of fact i would say that it's more relatable and authentic if you just take a good old selfie with your smartphone and just update it here so you don't need to like overthink this or make it too hard for you because at the end of the day these days people have cameras studio equipment we have ai images we have all the coolest features that you can use to enhance your images but the way to stand out is by being yourself. So just add a regular selfie of yourself or some kind of a traditional image of yourself. So don't put much time on it and don't overthink that. And then you also want to show up with your real name. So don't come up with something here. I think it's best if you show up with your name. And then also you want to write a biography for your profile. So this could be something and as you can actually see it's very short so this is a very short one to two sentences about yourself and what i would recommend doing is that you just describe what kind of stories you are going to write so for instance because i'm a software developer and i enjoy the platform to create software development related content i can just type in something like hi i love to write about programming and software development Something like that. It can be very basic and very simple like that. So once again, you don't need to overthink that phase. Just use something that describes you and just be yourself. And now your profile is pretty much done. So just use your own name, use your own image and specify a short biography. And then one thing that some people might want to do is use this profile design section right here. So you can click on here and you can start creating this like you can customize your header you can do all these colors you can add an image here you can do all kinds of cool things to make your profile stand out but to be brutally honest i think the best way to stand out is just by letting your content do the talking and letting your profile be as it is so i have never really customized my profile because i just want to use it as it is it already looks professional most of the profiles on medium look like this so you definitely don't want to mess up with the colors don't use some fancy fonts and i don't think that it's a wise move at this point to spend time on designing your profile of course if you want to and if you have a knack for web design or creating these kind of beautiful layouts then for sure go for go for it but but if you're somebody like me who doesn't really have that much of design experience then i would just recommend using it as it is so just customize your profile and then you're good to go now it is finally time to start writing content on the platform so if you want to write a story you don't need to be a paid member you can write content on the platform for free so just open up medium.com and make sure that you're signed in and then click on here at the top right corner where it says write and right here you're going to see your blog post editor or medium story editor as they call it and here you can see this kind of a short section where it says all this or gives these hints to use this story editor so these are very useful you can actually just run through it try this out and then you basically know how to use the editor but i'm also going to show you everything here in a practical practical point of view so let me actually paste some content here so let's do something like this i have a blog post about three essential gym exercises to build muscle and right now this is just a boring wall of text and now i'm going to show you how to use medium editor while making this blog post look a lot nicer so let's start with the introduction section so one thing that is very common on medium is to add a subheading under this title so for example we could add something like 
you don't want to miss these or something like that you need to be a bit more creative than i but the point here is that i'm just showing how to do it so then you can format it by highlighting it and clicking on this smaller t icon so this is very common so you have this huge title and then you have this kind of grayed out subtitle and then also most of the blog posts on medium or most of the stories on medium rather start with an image so first of all hit enter right here and then you're going to see this small plus icon on the left hand side of the blog post editor and if you click on this you can add an image either by clicking here or by clicking here so if you have your own image you can click on here or you can just drag and drop it right here in this blog post editor but if you don't have images like most people don't you can click on this second option that is this add an image from unsplash and this is a free image library and now we can do something like let's for example do fitness and then we're going to see all these cool images so as you can see these are really professional images you can click on next here to see even more images and for example i can take this one right here on the left bottom corner and if i click on it it will add this image into my blog post and what's really cool is that i can use this as it is so i don't need to worry about copyrights or anything of that sort because this image comes from the Unsplash free stock footage library. And now the credits have already been put here. So this is Bruce Mars on Unsplash. He has taken this kind of a nice image and now I'm using it and it's this simple. So you don't need to worry about copyrights or anything of that sort. So you can add all these images to your blog post to make this blog post look nicer and to stand out a bit better than just a boring wall of text. And then Next, let's start editing this text content right here. So first and foremost, what I usually like to do is I would like to add some space here between these blog post sections. So I want to keep my paragraphs very short because you got to remember that most of the people are reading these blog posts with their smartphones. So I'm not sure about most of them, but a huge chunk of medium audience is reading on a smartphone. So if you have a wall of text, even if you have a chapter like this that has like four, five sentences, this looks already a bit boring on a mobile device because the screen size is so narrow. So you want to add this spacing here to make it look better. And now I'm going to bold this last section. So it, you don't need to do that, but I'm going to bold this last sentence. So here are three exercises that are awesome. So this is like the one that I want the people to pay attention to. So, so I can highlight it. And then I can click on this B option right here. And if you want to do something like italics, you can also click on I. But I usually don't do italics. I think that that's unnecessary for most of the time. So I just use bolding or just regular text. But nonetheless, this is now making the blog post look a lot nicer already. And now you can see that I have actually added these exercises here in this blog post. So you have squats over here, then you have bench press somewhere, you have deadlifts over here, here you have bench press here. So now what I want to do is break up or break down this text nicely. So I'm going to remove this. I want to add this as my subheadings for this blog post. So these are like the subsections of my blog post. So this is not just one wall of text, but it is a blog post with nicely formatted sections. And then I can do something like I can add a number here, I can add a number here, I, I can add a number here. Now I'm going to highlight this section and I'm going to please click on this big T icon. And then I'm also going to do the same here and here. And by the way, if you have like sub subsections, you can then click on this smaller T. So if you have something like, let's say you have a section here like how to do, then you can put it like, as a smaller subse subsection like this but nonetheless this is how you can edit your blog post to look nicer so now it's already getting some kind of a form so it has a title subtitle an image a nice introduction with short sections and then the subheadings and these sections and now i'm also going to add some images into these sections to make it look even nicer Alrighty, so now I have some images. Now this is looking like a proper blog post. So you have these sections, subsections, and you have these images, and all these images are credited properly. So I'm not stealing anyone's images without attribution. And now I also want to show you one other cool thing related to adding multimedia to your blog post. So for instance, 
Let's say that I have a blog post like this, that I'm just listing quickly these gym exercises and I want to be a bit more specific. Well, what I can do is I can link to one of these other blog posts from a website that I trust and that I find insightful and I can go back to my blog post editor and I can actually do something like this. So somewhere here in the middle, I can paste a link to another website and then I can hit enter and Medium is going to render this kind of a nice looking card or this kind of a preview for this website. So this way you can make your blog post look even nicer and even richer in multimedia content. And this is really good, for example, here, because I'm just like listing this exercise, I'm not showing how to do it. The reader can find it very insightful to actually know how to do it. So there's, here is a resource that I actually recommend and checking. And you can also do this on YouTube videos. So for instance, let's do another one. Let's do this deadlift form check video and let's add it at somewhere at the end of this section. So I'm mentioning deadlifts here and I will place the link right over here and then I hit enter and it will actually render a really nice preview. So people don't actually need to escape or exit this blog post, but they can just click on here to start watching the video. So this is like a comprehensive guide. So not only are you listing these exercises and adding a wall of text, but you have formatted it nicely, you have added images, you have credited the authors of these images automatically, and then you have also added some additional resources, and all they can be find, found on this one blog post. So this is what really takes it to a next level and makes it stand out really, really nicely. Oh, and by the way, if you want to add some visual separation to your blog post, you can use these parts. So you can hit on enter, click on plus and then click on these three dots. So you're going to see these three subtle dots before like the next section. So for example, I have squats over here and then I have bench press section over here. So in the middle, I can add these parts just to separate it visually and just to let, make it look a bit nicer. So this is something you can also do on Medium. And by the way, when you are using your Medium blog post editor, you can also do bulleted lists and numbered lists. So for example, let's put a to take home section right here at the end of this blog post and I'm going to just quickly list these best exercises so and then I can hit enter I can type in a number followed by a dot and then when I hit space it will actually format it in this kind of a numbered list form so I can do let's say squat then I can hit enter it will automatically add the number two there so squat bench and then dead deadlift and you can also do the same in the form of like a bulleted list so you can just hit on dash hit on space and then it will format it like this so these are the strategies you can use to make your blog posts or stories look a bit nicer and actually richer in content so you definitely don't want to add like a just like a wall of text that looks very boring because that will drive your audience way and especially these days because of the ai you can like you can generate a blog post like this that just has text with the tools like ChatGPT or other similar AI writing tools and that's something that anybody can do and that's also banned on Medium so you can't really even do that you are going to get banned from the platform and also that kind of content never draws any attention because people can notice instantly that this is some kind of aggregated content or this is some kind of AI generated scraped content that is not providing any value or adding any insights so you need to keep that in mind. So you want to make sure that your blog posts actually stand out. And the best way to do this is by adding some multimedia elements in your blog posts, the way I just showed you how to do it. And now that your story is actually ready, it is time to publish it. And now if I hit publish right here, I can change this preview image. So first and foremost, this is important because this is the image that you're going to get when you share this story or when somebody else shares this story. So if somebody shares this on LinkedIn or on a WhatsApp group, or a Facebook group or wherever, this is the image that they are going to render there automatically or and the other people are going to see that. So you want to change this if it's not accurate. So for instance, I could change it to this one, although the previous one was already good. But this is one thing you want to make sure of that the featured image or this story preview image is actually accurate. And then the next thing you need to do is add these topics right over here. So you can add up to five tags or topics that best describe your content. So for example, here I'm talking about gym exercises. So I can do something like fitness. It actually suggests me those. I can do gym, gym workout, 
and I can do health. I can do like training and that's pretty much it. And now the blog post is ready. You can schedule for it later, but you can also publish right now. And if you want to publish right now, just hit on publish and the story is now live. And this is your first medium story. Now let me briefly talk to you about publications. So let's take one step back and let's put another blog post in. So here's another blog post that I just created and now I'm ready to publish this as it is. Of course, you would need to add all these images and formatting, but for the sake of demonstration, I'm just going with this one. So now what you want to do is click on these three dots at the top right corner when you're ready to publish and you can click on add to publication. And now when I click that, it says no publications available. And this is because you actually need to apply and to get accepted to these publications before you're able to submit your stories over there. And even if you are in a publication, you would still need to submit it there and they would need to review that blog post. So not all these blog posts that you write are going to end up in a publication because some of them get rejected and you might not see these publications just yet. So if you don't have any publications, unfortunately, there is no clear cut one strategy with which you could apply to one of these publications. So every single publication on Medium has their own set of rules. So for instance, let's, let me show you what I mean. So this is a how to land your first job as a programmer. So this is a software development related article. And now if I want to find a relevant publication for it and apply to it as a writer, I can go to Medium. I can type here software development. And by the way, if you're not seeing these suggestions, just refresh the page a couple of times because I just noticed that sometimes it doesn't show these automatically. But nonetheless, you can see the most relevant software development publications right over here. So for example, I can click on this JavaScript in plain English. And now it opens up the landing page of the publication. And here you need to seek for this write for us section. And this can have multiple names. It can be one of these blog posts over here there might be a button somewhere, there might be a collaborate, contribute, or whatever it is. It, there are many names to call these collaborate sections. For But for example, for this publication, it is right for us. So for instance, here you can click on right for us. And here you can apply to become one of the authors of these programming related publications. So you can get more I pairs to your stories even without followers because you can become this contributor on this kind of a on this kind of a publication. So for example, let's take another one. For example, let's take this code like a girl just to compare how it looks. Here you can see right with us. So it's in a different place with a different wording. And when I click on this, it throws me into a completely different looking page than where I was when I clicked on here in the JavaScript in plain English publication. So here you got all these instructions on how to publish on this publication and how to apply and what kinds of stories they accept and reject and what kind of format you need to have. So because sometimes they list these topics that they are not accepting. For example, on a coding application or a coding publication, there might be so many stories related to how to get a job as a programmer that these publications simply won't accept blog posts with that topic anymore just to keep their audience interested and just to avoid spam and repetition. But nonetheless, you can find these publications like this and then you just need to apply. Usually they have some kind of a form. So you have a link to a form somewhere over here and then you're just going to apply. Usually you just need to fill in the, fill in the form, wait for a couple of days and then they will accept or reject to the publication. And then once you have been accepted, you can head over to your story, click on these three dots, add to publication, and then you're going to see these publications right over here. So for example, I can actually sign up with my other real medium account and show how it actually looks like. So now I have signed up to my actual account and now I have been accepted to a bunch of publications. So if I click on here, I click on add to publication, I have a bunch of these right over here. And I have actually, a lot of times I have published here in Python in plain English or JavaScript in plain English. And you can just choose one. And once you have chosen one, for example, this one, select and continue, then this publish button turns into a submit button. And when it comes to publishing to these publications, just be patient and don't get upset if you don't get accepted. 
So it still happens to me, even though I have published a ton of content on the internet, I still might not get accepted into all the publications, I some, and some of my stories still are rejected. So they are telling me that this is a good blog post, but this is not going to get into our publication today. And that's just the name of the game. There are publications that are very strict, so only like 5 to 10% of the stories might get in. So I would say that don't get ashamed if you don't get into a publication, but instead celebrate if you get accepted into one. And also one thing to keep in mind is that these publications are definitely not like a mandatory thing, so you don't need to publish on publications. But I really love these publications because they will give you some initial exposure. So if you think about Medium, if you don't have any followers, there is nobody reading your stories from their feed. And then you're only relying on your tags or these topics that you're publishing on your blog post before it goes live. And then you're also relying on Medium's algorithm to find the right kind of audience. And yes, your story might absolutely go viral if you don't publish it on a publication, if you don't have any followers, and even if you don't add any tags or topics to it. So if you just write and publish, you might still go viral. And as a matter of fact, if you have a good story and it's good enough, insightful enough, valuable enough, that is exactly what's going to happen. So it doesn't really matter where you publish it. But when it comes to getting like, let's say 500 to 1000 views to your story, it can be very tricky unless you go viral. So what might happen if you don't use publications is that you publish, let's say 100 stories and 95 of those get absolutely no reads at all or one or two reads. And then there are some that get like 10,000 reads. So you don't want to have it that way. You would much rather see that every one of your blog posts will get at least like a couple of hundred reads because you will also earn something and then you will get feedback, you will get reactions and you can start seeing your traffic build up nicely. So that's also a bit more motivating. But nonetheless, use publications, apply to as many as you like, as long as they're related to your content and the topics that you're writing about. And don't get upset if you don't accept it or if you don't get accepted and just remember to celebrate if you do. Please remember to sign up to my free masterclass about Medium because at this point I have just shown you how to write these blog posts, how to find publications and people, how to interact with authors, but I haven't really shown you the growth strategy. So it takes much more than just this 30 minute session right here. So if you want to learn how to actually grow on Medium and how to get viewers or readers to your blog posts, how to get more followers, how to start making money, and how to monetize your blog in a multiple ways, make sure to sign up to that, that free masterclass. 